Oh, my dear learners, it is again another beautiful moment to be on your screen. Please call a friend, to call a friend, to come, to call a friend, because it is time for learning. Remember, whenever it is time for learning, you have to get away from distractions, okay? You need to be in a silent place, a silent room, so that you can concentrate, you can pay full attention. Okay, friends, this is our third le lesson. So now, if you missed the previous two, you have to go back and you check on them, okay? So that we can be on the same page. You get? Now, we are going to begin from where we stopped. I left you with an activity, and now it's time for marking. Let's check the activity, and you get to know the correct answers or responses, okay? Now, which was number one? Question one, please read question one. Okay, very good. I expect you to have, if you are Msoga like me, you say, I'm Soga. If you are Muganda, you say, I'm Uganda. And Alul, Emuchiga, uh, and so many others. Any tribe is correct. And I believe you have to be honest. If you are Mtor, don't write that I am a, a Langi, okay? You have to write your exact tribe. Let's get to question, uh, to Roman numeral two. You are ethnic group, I expect to have Bantu, Hamites, Nails. Do we have the pygmites? If you are there, I expect pygmites also. Next. Uh, uh, find out from your parents or guardian why you are ethnic group left its homeland. Actually, in this question, you are, uh, you are supposed to give the reasons to why ethnic groups left their homeland. For, for instance, we have one. They migrated because of outbreak of famine. So there was scarcity of food. The only option was to go to other places that had food, okay? We also have they migrated due to internal and external conflicts. Some of them were attacked by their neighbors. So that forced them to move on, to find the other places that were free, okay? Other reason, they migrated to look for fertile soil. For instance, which ethnic group do you think migrated in order to look for fertile soil? Yes, the Bantu. Since they were farmers, or, or rather cultivators, for them they wanted to look for fertile soil for crop, growing. So we are not going to repeat these causes uh, as we are going to handle each, uh, each ethnic group after the other. When I bring the Bantu, we shall not repeat reasons for the migration of the Bantu because they are the same. For instance, you would say Bantu migrated to look for fertile soil for crop growing, internal conflicts, love for adventure, and very many others. Let's get to next question. Why did your parents decide to settle where you live today? These are the expectations. One, maybe the place has state security. Because it is very important to be in a place which is secure, okay? Two, I expect, I expect you to have the place has good transport means. For instance, when you want to go somewhere, you don't have to wait for 10 hours before you get any means of transport. You just get out, you stop a taxi or a motorcycle, then you, you get to where you want to go. The other expectation is it is near good schools like Kampala quality, okay? If, if your home specifically is near a good school like this one, it is one of the reasons why your parents decided to settle in that place. There are also very many other expectations that maybe I note right here. As uh, uh, whenever you know that there is that good reason or that good good stuff next to your home, it could be a reason to why your parents settled there. So there are very many answers. Let's get the next question very fast. Please may you read question two. Okay, let's see the response. Fertile soil encouraged ethnic groups to grow crops, mainly those who were cultivators. 
The main reason why they came to East Africa, because it had fertile soil that could promote or that promoted their activity, which is cultivation. Question three, how did the thick forests affect the movement of the ethnic groups? How did the thick forests affect the movement of ethnic groups? These are some of the expectations. One, thick forests made it difficult for ethnic groups to cross, to cross them, okay? Remember, they were very thick. It was not very easy to penetrate through forests, and you had to cross them. So it was difficult. It, it would take them some good time. Then we also expect uh, to have forest, thick forests harbored or kept dangerous wild animals. Of course, that, that could attack the people. Some of them lost their lives when they were trying to cross forests. So it was not easy for ethnic groups to get to East Africa, okay? Let's see the next question. Mention three effects of the coming of ethnic groups. Now, even in this situation, we are not going to bring them back. When we handle uh, an ethnic groups, the effects are usually the same. Okay, you talk about their activity, their skills, and of course the population. For instance, we have, it led to increased population in East Africa. That can be a general answer that you can write to any ethnic group. If you are asked, state any one effect for the migration of the Nilots. When they came, what happened to the population? It increased, so it can be applied anywhere. Are we together, friends? Good. We also have, it led to the introduction of new languages, like these languages we speak. For instance, I belong to the Bantu. I speak Lusoga. It was introduced by the Bantu. Even other tribes, they speak these new languages that they were brought in East Africa. We also have, it led to introduction of new skills like pottery, cultivation, animal rearing, and so many others. The list is endless, but we just have a few. We have the next question. In which way did the Bushmen benefit from the coming of ethnic groups? Remember, Bushmen were the original inhabitants of this place. Which place am I talking about? East Africa. Let's say Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. So how did we, how did those people benefit from the coming of these ethnic groups? One, Bushmen learned new skills. Like which one? I've mentioned some of them, like cultivation, you remember these guys were hunt, uh, they were hunters and fruit gatherers. So when these people came, they now copied. They started culling out uh, or growing crops. We also have the bushmen. Uh, bushmen learned new culture, and so many others. So now we have. To, we are going to be so fast during our next lesson or today's lesson. I request you to sit, be so silent, concentrate, because I'm going to be a little faster. Okay, so friends, today we are going to hand another thing, okay? As you can see, now someone is saying, what are we going to, to handle? I bring to you the Bantu. Remember I told you we shall be hand handling one after the other. So we have started with the Bantu, okay? Now, what do I expect you to know by the end of my lesson? One, uh, you'd be able to explain who the Bantu were. Two, to identify the origin of the Bantu. Three, uh, to mention tribes that belong to the Bantu. Four, you'll be also able to discuss, uh, the, uh, to know the place where the Bantu settled and why, uh, why they settled in those places, okay? Now, let's get to the first session, session one. Remember, I told you we shall be handling session per session. I don't want to leave anyone behind, okay? Session one, we have the Bantu. Now, who are the Bantu? Who are the Bantu? I know your teacher of P5 told you who Bantus were. Please, may you write down what your teacher has told you? Okay, do that very quickly. Okay, now we have to compare. I'm going to compare your answer with mine and, that, and see if you, you, were, you could re really remember what the P5 teacher told you. I expect you to have Bantu, uh, a, a, a large group of people who speak related languages with a common suffix, 
you can say a common word in two, referring to a person or omuntu. A person referring to omuntu. You get? In our local languages, we say omuntu. So I expect you to have the Bantu, are a group of people, of course, they share the same origin, but in their languages, they have a common suffix. When I say suffix, I mean a letter or letters that can be added on, uh, in front of a word to make a new word. Okay? Those three letters, letters into NTU, into they are added on some words to come up with a new word. And they refer to a person or moon. For that very reason, that's why they are called the Bantu. Because they, ha they speak related languages with a common word, Ntu. Okay? It is also important to know that this is the largest ethnic group in East Africa. It occupies the largest part uh, of the region. Okay? Let's see our next session. Uh, origin of the Bantu. Remember, these people came from other places to East Africa. Where did they come from? Please, my friend, may you write that answer? Because now this is, we learned that in P5. Okay, okay. I see someone having, let's check, Cameroon Highlands. Okay, Cameroon Highland or Highlands uh, is, an, is a mountain, is a highland in West Africa. Okay, it is between Nigeria and Cameroon. So as you can see my illustration, see something like a dot, but it is the place it's between Cameroon and Nigeria. So this is a small view, it's around this place in West Africa on the map of Africa. Now this is the bigger view. Between Cameroon and Nigeria is the place Cameroon Highlands, okay? That's where the band came. But remember, when they were coming to East Africa, they had stopovers. Like, they, they had a stopover uh, in the Congo Basin, just in DRC Congo here. And that's why when they were coming to Uganda, they just passed through DRC, then to Uganda. Others, other groups of the band also went to other parts of Africa. Let's say South Africa. We shall see who were those ones who went south. Africa. Now, let's get to our next session. I told you I'm going to be a little fast, so you have to be very attentive. Oh, yeah. Occupation of the Bantu. Which kind of work were they doing? Oh, which kinds of work do Bantu people carry out? Let's see. What do you have? Okay. Okay, let's confirm. Now, the main work was cultivation. Or you can say crop growing. As you can see in my, uh, my illustration, these people were mainly, uh, they were mainly carrying out cultivation. For instance, they also had carried out fishing and keeping some domestic animals. But the main activity was crop growing. Whenever you were asked which was the main occupation of the Bantu, we simply say crop growing or cultivation. As you can see, are you able to identify those crops? Oh yeah, I simulate. I also see banana plant. So those are even some of the crops that were brought by the Bantu, okay? So when we are asked about the effects, one is here. Bantu introduced new crops in East Africa. Let's get to the next slide. Let's get to the next session and we see. Oh yeah, tribes under the Bantu. Please, may you mention the tribes that, you, that are in Uganda, that you know uh, belonging to the Bantu? Someone has said uh, uh, Basoga, I know, because I am one of them. So we have Basoga. <laughs> Some other person has said Banyankole. Very correct, Banyankole. Bachiga. Banyole, yes, Banyole is also correct. Okay, now let's confirm. Now we have... Bantu tribes in Uganda, they are very many. Actually, if you don't see your tribe and you belong to the band, please, I'm sorry. The list is endless, okay? But we have some of them, Bachiga, Bamba, Baluri, Banyankole, Bagwere, Basamia, and so many others. Remember, these guys, these, these people also went to other parts of East Africa. 
not only in Uganda. So we can also go to, to Kenya and we see some of the Bantu tribes that decided to live in Kenya. Have you seen some tribe that you have ever heard or that you heard about before? Let's see. We have the Akamba. Can you say Akamba? Good. They can also be called Kamba. You can say Kamba or Akamba. We also have the, uh, the Gusi. We have the Gusi. We also have the Chikuyu people. We have the Meru, Embu. Uh, we have the Pokomo, Mbere, Mijikenda. And uh, we have the Luhia. When I reach Luhia, I have to pause a little. Because in P5, we used to emphasize Luhia. This is the only band tribe in Kenya that formed a kingdom. Do you still remember that? Oh, wow. That's very good. So we also have the Taita and so many others. So these are some of the Bantu tribes that are found in Kenya. For me, I'm still recalling, we have the Luhia, that can also be called Abaluhia, we have the Taita, we have the Mijikenda, we have the Chikuyu, and so many others. Please, let's get to Tanzania. And we also see some Bantu tribes in Tanzania. You never know when some of your grandparents are there and you heard about them, you call yourself a Mganda when your grandparent is from this tribe. We have the Yao, the Nyamwezi, the Hehe, the Ngoni. Now, when I reach Ngoni, I have to pause a little. Ask me why. Okay. Someone is very attentive. The Ngoni uh, tribe was the last band tribe to come to East Africa. And as I told you earlier, that some band groups went to other parts of Africa. So the, the Ngoni had gone to South Africa, but they also had their other fells known as the Zulu people. They had conflicts, they had a, a war, they had a fight, and those guys were defeated. They decided to give up, and they later came to East Africa. So you can imagine why did they leave South Africa? They were defeated by the uh, Shaka. That was the, uh, the, the chief of the Zulu people. So they were defeated by the Shaka, the chief of the Zulu people. That's the reason to why they left South Africa. Let's go ahead. Now we also have this, uh, the Bantu in Rwanda and, uh, and Burundi. Those are the Hutu. Have an illustration of the Hutu. No, the, those two countries have minimal tribes. They are not very many like in Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. So the Hutu are the Bantu people in, uh, in Rwanda and Burundi. Okay? Now, something to note the largest Bantu tribe in Uganda are the Baganda. Baganda, where are you? Can you wave? Very good. Now, when you go to Kenya, we have the Chikuyu people. Then Tanzania, we have the Wasukuma. You can also call them Sukuma. Sukuma? Someone is saying Sukuma. Yes, it's very correct. Sukuma or Wasukuma. Let's get to our next session. Are you enjoying? See someone, I, I like your smile. It is perfect. Okay. Now, session five. Uh, what do we have? Settlement of Bantu in East Africa. Where did Bantu live? Remember, their main activity was cultivation when they came to East Africa. Which places do you think they lived in? Write it down very fast. Okay, you learned that in P5. Do you still recall? Very good. Okay, let's see. Uh, we have intercastrine region. Oh, wow. What do we mean by intercastrine region? The word intercastrine simply means between lakes. Between lakes or water bodies. Okay, so these people, when they came to East Africa, they decided to settle near lake shores or between lakes. Why do you think the burnt people decided to live in such places? Is someone thinking? Your answer is very correct. Let's confirm. Now, before, uh, this is the one we, we, we call the intercastrian region, between the Great Lakes of East Africa. Are you able to identify that? Oh, someone is happy saying, what is that? What is happening? This place is the one we call the Interacastrian region. The place, uh, the land between the Great Lakes of East Africa. It can be East Africa, it can be Uganda, or Africa. Okay? Examples of such lakes, you have this one. 
Do you remember its name? That's Victoria. We have Choga, Albert, Edward, George, Eyas, Nevasha, and Lake Trukana. There are very many. Those are examples of great lakes. Now, why did they decide to lay, live in those places? One, one, this place, these places had fertile soil for crop growing. Since they were mainly cultivators, they needed places with fertile soil that could support. As you can see, they needed uh, two. The place had a presence of reliable rainfall. The place could receive plenty of rainfall that, that still supports the growing of crops. Three, they also wanted to carry out fishing to support their uh, food, okay? It was very easy for them to go and fish. They get, uh, they get fish to supplement on their food. Those are the reasons to why the Bantu decided to live in the intercastrian region. Have you seen? That's what I was talking about. You plant something today, after a month, you go and harvest even without applying watering, what caused the place could receive plenty of rainfall. This is what I was talking about too. This place provided fishing grounds like, like Victoria, Trukana, Tanganyika. So it was very easy for them, as you can see, the activity. Okay? Now, before I wind up, please, I have this map. Okay? This, um, this map shows the routes that the band used to come to East Africa. Which routes did they use? Now we have big, uh, I want you to look here. We have the northern route. Are you able to see this one? Uh -huh, very good. Some Bantu tribes use the northern route, mainly between Lake Albert. So ha have you seen that uh, blue arrow? Very good. That route was known as the northern route. So when Bantu were coming to East Africa, some of them used the northern route. And those mainly settled in in central part of Africa, uh, of East Africa, okay? That's Uganda and the western part of Kenya. Let's get to the next route. You see, we also have the central route, or you can call it the western route. Uh, these people you are uh, passed between Lake Chivu. Lake Chivu is is a, is, is 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 around is between Rwanda, Rwanda and and which other country? Very good. Yes, Lake Chivu. They also came and occupied part of Kenya. Some came to Uganda, like the Bachiga. Yes, came to Uganda like the Bachiga, and some lived in Tanzania. Okay, we have the last route, and that was the southern route. Has someone seen the southern route? Yes, now someone saying that arrow. This one is the southern route. So, and this is where exactly the Ngoni, uh, this is the route the Ngoni took. And I told you when I say Ngoni, I have to pause. Are you again asking me why? It was the last band tribe to come to East Africa. And I told you the reason to why they left South Africa, and South Africa was not their cradle land. Their cradle land was the Cameroon Highlands, but they went, they first went to South Africa. So when they fell in South Africa because of the Shaka, uh, Shaka Zulu Wars, they decided to come to East Africa and they entered through Tanzania. And when you were in East Africa here, this is the southern direction. So now, before I summarize my work, it is important to know that the Bantu are also grouped according to the places where they settled. There are some tribes that came to East Africa and settled on mountain slopes. Do you know any in Uganda? Someone has said Bagisu, very correct, Bagisu. We also have the Chikuyu in Kenya. We also have the Chaga, by the way, in Tanzania. Those belong to the highland. Bantu, that is the first group of the Bantu Highland. Bantu. We also have those who settled at the coast of East, along the coast of East Africa. Are you able to recognize the coast of East Africa? This one here. Those who lived around those places are referred to as coastal Bantu. I mentioned some examples. Have you heard of Mijikenda? 
very good. The Mijikenda are uh, examples of the uh, coastal Bantu. We also have uh, the, the Southern Bantu, those who mainly settled in the southern part of East Africa. For instance, the Yao, the Ngoni, those belong to the southern Bantu. We also have the central Bantu, those who settled around the central part of East Africa. And lastly, the western Bantu. Like you can mention Banyankore, the western Bantu. You have been a very good audience. I want to thank you that you were so attentive. I guess you are able to memorize, to remember everything we have learned. Now, before I leave this place, I have a very good activity for you. And I expect everyone to answer these questions in the right way. Please, when you are doing my work, identify the key words. And first think, before you write any answer, remember writing a good handwriting, OK? I have an activity for you. Today, I'm not going to read, uh, to read through this work. It's your duty to also take that initiative to read by yourselves. Because remember last time I read it through and you were just enjoying saying, let the teacher read for us. No. Today, since you are a semi-candidate, you were able to read through this work and I expect good, good answers. Hope to meet you again. See you next time.